Hello everybody and welcome in this new video tutorial in which I'm going to show you how to create a base mesh with a good topology for a character. The idea of this tutorial is not to be very Blender specific, but it's more to show you my workflow and my approach to this specific task. A good base mesh is, for me at least, a huge time saver when sculpting a high poly character. So I'm going to be very precise in uh, explaining the different techniques that could be uh, very uh, important for uh, the later use of this base mesh. So let's get started. I'm going to click in order to make the splash screen disappear. Uh, if at any point you are lost in the tutorial, don't hesitate to go uh, take a look at the bottom left. I'm using an add-on that will show you the different shortcuts I'm using. And if you are really lost because of my French accent, don't worry. Uh, you have a comment section where you can ask for help. So let's get started. I'm going to remove the default cube by pressing X and by pressing delete. And in fact, you know what? I'm going to press B to box select the camera and the light and to delete uh, them also. I'm then going to be uh, spawning a round cube object. So if you're pressing shift A, you probably by default won't have this round cube mesh. If it's the case, it's because you didn't activate the uh, add-on in the preferences called extra object. So I'm going to press F4 in order to have the file context menu pop over. I'm going to go into preferences and I'm going to go in the add-on sections uh, section, sorry, and I'm going to press extra to activate the extra objects add-on here. So now you should be able to press shift A and to have a round cube. Okay. So we are going to go in the front view by pressing one and by pressing tab, I'm going to enter into edit mode. I'm going to deselect everything by pressing Alt A or by pressing A twice really fast. And I'm going to go into X-ray mode by pressing Alt Z. Then using the B key, I'm going to select the left part of the object or the right, it depends on <laughs> where you're looking through. Okay, and I'm going to press X and delete the vertices. Um, if I didn't press the, if I hadn't pressed the, the old Z uh, shortcut, I wouldn't be able to select through the mesh. Okay, so by default, for instance, in Maya, you, you are able to select through, but it's not the case in Blender. And then we are going to go in the modifier sections section here, and we are going to add a mirror modifier like this then we can press the clipping option and we are ready to start modeling the head. So this uh, geometry will be good enough to start the topology of the head. So I'm going to go in the side view and I'm going to create first um, a line that will represent the jawline. Okay. So in order to do this, we are going to push some vertices around. Okay, let me remove this line. And in order to do this, I'm going to use the proportional editing by pressing the O key. And the same tool in our software are sometime, sometimes called soft selection. But as you can see, it's a way to, to, to move vert vertices around in a soft manner. So I'm going to uh, go like this approximately. And then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude uh, the jaw uh, line. So I'm going to push some vertices around. And one thing that is really, really important when modeling organic shape is to don't worry uh, about what you are uh, moving around. Uh, some beginners are very cautious about, uh, cautious about the fact that uh, when you move something, it's the end, <laughs> uh, but don't worry when you are modeling, you are pushing vertices along all the time and you are fixing stuff and you're basically using a virtual clay. Okay. So nothing is a mistake. Uh, so we are going to go into face mode and we're going to select the bottom part and we are going to extrude this part by pressing, sorry, by pressing E. Okay. So now this part, I'm going to rotate, rotate it a bit because I'm looking at this jawline. So if I'm pressing Alt and left click, I can select this line. And as you can see, it will be a good start for creating the jaw. Then I'm going to press Alt Z to come back into 
to, to leave the x-ray mode and I'm going to select using the box select. So each time you see this, it's because I'm pressing B and I'm box selecting. Okay. And the fact that I'm not in x-ray mode, uh, it means that I can select only what I see. So now I'm going to select this vertex and if I'm pressing control in Blender and I'm clicking here, it will like select the pass of vertex of vertices that I'm uh, that, uh, that will be in between those two points. So it's a shortcut for selecting those three ver ver vertices, sorry, those three vertex. <laughs> and I'm going to um, push like the vertices like this. Okay. Just to be very precise, to, to be very uh, transparent with you, I'm, I don't know where I'm going with this. It's very, it's like in pro, I'm uh, like pushing vertices around and if there is something that won't be uh, right, I'm going just to fix it uh, using my basic uh, tool set, um, poly modeling tool set, okay? So usually a head is more like a box. So I'm going to select the proportional editing and I'm going to flatten the side like this. And if I'm looking from the top, it's wider in the back and it's a bit thinner in the front like this okay so this vertex here is not well placed so i'm going to push it back and from the side view i want to uh, create a more again boxy shape i want to push all this geometry up a bit and i want to select the whole head by pressing a and i want to scale everything a bit so it fits better with the ideal proportion of the head and I'm going to make the, the forehead a bit higher and I'm going to like push some vertices around okay so this is a, I think a good start it's not perfect but don't worry it's going to be the case all the time and you're uh, we are then going to add the the eye socket section so in order to do this what I want to do is to have a line that will be like this like a mask that represents a mask. So in order to do this, one thing that I usually do is I select some vertices, some uh, faces, sorry, and I'm pressing I in order to inset. And um, in this case, I'm probably, no, I'm, I'm probably, yes, I'm probably going to use those faces. And if I'm pressing I and B, B it's going to take the mirror into account. It's uh, going to analyze the boundary of the inset and it's going to uh, leave the boundary uh, uh, intact. So in this case, now what I've created is this, a loop around the eyes. So I need to shape now my new geometry in order to make it more like a mask and it will represent better a nice socket, okay? So I'm going to do this. I'm going to push the eyebrows a bit forward and I'm going to push the cheekbone a bit forward. One important thing is to look around all the time. You don't want to stay in one view, especially when you don't have a lot of topology, a lot of polygons. Okay. So now what I want to do is to re uh, leave the proportional editing by pressing O again, and I'm going to use those, uh, this vertex, remove it, and I'm going to use this line, this uh, loop, and I'm going to extrude it, and I'm going to turn it a bit on the Z axis. So I'm pressing R and Z, and uh, this is going to be the eyelid. So if I'm going uh, in the top view and pressing Alt Z, you can see it starts to look a bit like the uh, eye socket. Okay, so I want to be even more precise than this, and I want to uh, create a better eye socket. So in order to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another object. I'm going to add a sphere, uh, whatever the orientation, and I'm going to press Alt Z in order to go into transparent uh, see-through mode uh, and I'm selecting this object and I'm going to uh, place it approximately there uh, 
uh, and I'm going to scale it a bit. Usually you have one eyeball in the center and one and a half, uh, a half of um, an eye on the side. Depends on the proportions, uh, on the proportions you are relying on, but in this case it's going to be okay. And then I'm going to put the eye a bit forward and I'm going to select my mesh pack uh, in object mode, I'm going to go in edit mode, and then I'm going to snap those vertices to project them on the sphere. So in order to do in order uh, in order to do this, sorry, I'm going to activate the snapping here or pressing shift tab, and I'm going to use the face uh, snap to face, and I'm going to click on the rotate scale because I want uh, every transformation to uh, to use snapping, and I'm going to uh, project individual elements. Okay, so now when I'm moving or rotating or whatever, it's going to project my selection onto uh, whatever object is below. So in this case, I can project on the eye. And I'm going to try to make uh, the perfect eye opening. So don't worry about the fact that you don't have enough, to enough geometry. That's perfectly fine at this stage. The idea is to, to look add this loop and to uh, make it perfect. I'm going to add a loop there because I think it's going to be uh, required later. So it's I'm going to do this like this. And I think it's probably for now at least good enough like this. I'm going to press shift tab in order to remove the snapping uh, option and I'm going to adjust the eye socket around. Okay. So now I can remove the sphere and I'm good to go. So now what I want to do is I want to add, uh, I want to join the eye like this. That, that's something that I sometime, sometimes do. Uh, I want to fill the triangle here too. It's just to be sure that lines connects from the top and flows uh, to the bottom. Okay, so that's just for me um, a way to to think the flow of the different lines. So now I'm adding this line here that will be uh, shaping the eyelids, and I'm going to model them a bit, but not too much. Okay, we are not at the stage where the details are important. We are at the stage where we need a good base mesh topology to um, for the, the for the sculpting part later. Okay. So now we are going to add the nose. So in order to add the nose, what I want to do is to select few some some geometry basically here. Uh, but uh, I think that before um, adding the nose, I'm going to push, still push some vertices, some vertices around. Uh, I think this could be a bit further back in order to define the jawline better. So if you look at the face from the side, from the front, sorry, the, the jawline is a bit higher like this. And I'm going to yes, try to shape this in a much better way like this. Okay, so I don't like the fact that here I have stretched polygons. So what I'm going to do is, and don't worry, it's okay, I'm going to remove some polygons like this. And I'm then going to connect back those this line, those two edges by pressing F, so I can do both edges and by pressing F. And I'm going to reshape the flow of my topology. So if I want, I can like push back uh, a new edge here. So I'm pressing Ctrl R to add an edge and I'm going to push it back a bit. And I'm going to make an opening for a new edge again here. And I'm going to press F by selecting this edge, F and F, and I'm, I've closed the, the, the bottom uh, job. And as you can see, now I have a better flow, like this line is flowing right down and the shapes are better defined. So now what I want to do is I want to uh, I will be coming back to the to the um, a bit later to the the shape to the overall overall shape of the the, the the head. But now I want to add the nose. So in order to add the nose, what I want to do is I want to select future uh, some geometry, okay, 
Uh, and uh, in order to do this, I'm going to I'm going to push this back uh, to push this a, a bit lower, and I'm going to select this. I think. Then I'm going to press I, and it uh, it will be keeping the, um, the the boundary option, like by pressing B, as you as you may recall. And we are going to then um, extrude this forward. Okay, then I'm going to select those vertices and I'm going to push them like this a bit. And I'm going to try to make a better looking shape out of this. So, uh, as you may see, uh, this uh, loop here, I don't want to lose it. And it's not connecting, uh, it's connecting to the nasal part of the bone so it's not very good I think to my opinion so uh, what I want to do in this case is just an undo and uh, rethink about everything so I want to keep this this is a really important loop so in order to keep that what I want to do now is to uh, think that the nasal bone will be here okay so I'm going to push this up a bit and now I'm going to take into I count this part so I, I won't even do the inset I changed my mind I'm going to be a bit uh, loose with this and I'm just going to extrude like this okay and now I can move the points like this and as you can see by by selecting one face more I still have this loop that will go on top of the close to the nose bridge and uh, and this is something that is actually better in terms of uh, topology because it will separate the the the, nose, the, the wings of the nose um, in their own location i will say okay and as you can see if i'm selecting this loop uh, it's connecting the wings of the nose so now what i want to do quickly is to go in sculpt mode by pressing ctrl tab i'm going to go in the sculpt mode and i want using the shift key i want just to smooth my topology a bit as you can see, it's easier to do in sculpt mode. And I can also press G in order to sculpt a bit. So I'm using a mouse, so it won't be as good as when using a tablet, but it's good enough for what we want to do. And as you can see, it's pretty quick. And now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to try to create a better um, edge flow with the mouth. So what I want to do is, of course, add the topology of the mouth. But in order to do this, what I'm going to do is to remove this vertex. If I'm removing this vertex, I will also have to remove this face here. And what I want for sure to have is a loop that goes from the nostrils to from the, the, the wings of the nose, sorry, not the, nost the nostrils, around the mouth and back uh, on top of the chin. And this is called um, the loft line. And this is something that you will have to, to, to mark in a head for a base mesh, or at least to my opinion. So as you can see, I'm just extruding this loop because I want it. So <laughs> if I'm extruding it, I will have it. And then it's just a matter of like closing the gaps. So now what I'm going to do is to merge those two vertices because they look like uh, kissing lovers. <laughs> so I'm going to press right click and merge vertices at center. It's going to be okay. Uh, now I, do, I don't want to lose this flow, this loop flow. So I'm going to select this, this, pressing F. And I think those two vertices are going to be Kissing's lovers too, so you can see now I can close this shape, and as you can see, it flows right with the eye. So now I'm going to merge those two um, at center, and for the last two, I'm going to select them. I can also press Shift R in order to repeat the last action, but in this case, it it's not working for whatever reason, and I'm going to merge them back by pressing right click then. So as you can see now I have this loop and this loop is the loft line. So it's perfect uh, to have it right there. I'm going to push it back and to 
go back with my artist mindset now that I've um, I've made my topology. Usually, it's for me. It's a very close. It's 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 very um, left brain, right brain, left brain, li right brain. <laughs> like you need to be very logical, and sometimes you need to be very creative with the shapes. So remember that when you have a good topology, you will be very in very good hands for creating the shapes. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this loop by pressing Alt and left click, and I'm going to extrude it and scale it on the on the z-axis. Okay. Usually it's the 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 corners of the mouse ends uh, in the middle of the eye, but the eyes are a bit wide, so I'm going to scale them later. Uh, so I'm going to call it OK for the position of this mouth. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to use the same approach than for the eyes using a cylinder this time. So I'm going to put a cylinder like this that represents the thief. And I'm going to press Alt G to make it um, um, go to the center of the screen of the, the wall. And I'm going to lower the cylinder a bit like this. And I'm going to push it back approximately there. And then I'm going to activate the snapping using shift tab. And I'm going to snap the vertices around the teeth. I'm going to remove the cylinder, remove the snapping, pressing again, alt uh, shift tab, sorry. And I'm going to select this loop then and as you can see, I can push it a bit further like this. And I'm going to do the same thing then for the eyes. I'm going to connect the things. Okay, and don't worry about triangles. Triangles are not your enemy like a lot of tutorials says. They are there for you and they are good topology for a lot of cases. So now what I'm going to do is to add some lines. And I'm going to push a bit those lines. I'm going to here create the chin by pushing up some parts of the chin. And maybe, as you can see, in this case, the chin is a bit high. So what I will do is I will work a bit on the shape. So right brain, hi, you're there, yes. <laughs> I've left my left brain for the right brain now. Meaning that I need to do more artistic things. Okay, so I've pushed the jawline a bit lower in this situation. And I'm shaping the bottom line like this. Okay, so as you can see, it's horrible in terms of like uh, visual. So what I'm going to do is to go into sculpt mode and by pressing G, I'm going to sculpt with the mouse. It's not good usually, but I'm going to do it right now just to accommodate for the shapes. I'm going to push the eyes a bit inside because I think they are too, uh, too separated from one from each other. I'm going to flatten a bit the top of the nose and I'm going to lower down the uh, this part and I think I'm going to um, here work on the forehead a bit that is totally uh, looking bad. <laughs> so usually it means that I need some to add some geometry there. So I'm going, going I'm going to add sorry some geometry there for the forehead, and I'm going to make it a bit narrower, like this. Usually you have a, the forehead muscle here, but in this case it's not uh, it's not visible, and I don't like this. So I'm going to remove it, and I'm going to add a a line like this in order to merge those vertices. So I can press at last if I want in this case. Usually, I prefer to not have um, an end gun here, uh, uh, not an end gun, but a pole, sorry, here.
here. So a pole is a, this is a pole, but this pole is okay. A pole is like when you have a star, you see? So you have different edges that, that meets at one location. So I think in this case, it's much better. So we are going to keep this like this. And for the back of the head, I want to smooth the new line that I've introduced. So I'm going to smooth using the sculpt tools, the sculpt tool, and as you can see, it has uh, sucked the geometry a bit. So I'm going to uh, make it wider a bit with the grab tool. Okay. I'm going to smooth there. And as you can see, the flow starts to come a bit better in this case. So when you're looking at the three quarter uh, view, one thing that is really important in terms of shapes is to have this chick popping. And in this case, it's not the case. So what I want to do is to push back the chick a bit here and it should come, uh, it should be visible a bit. So I'm going to push the cheeks a bit. I'm going to make the mask forward a bit. So when I'm talking about the mask, I'm talking about this, remember. And I think we are in a better situation right now. Don't you think? Okay. So now what I want to do is to um, make the chin a bit more prominent. We are making more male base mesh in this case. And it will be easier in terms of sculpt to make the, the chin more pointy. So why not it make uh, why not making it wide by default? And I'm going to create bridge of the nose to make it a bit up, to push the nose inside. And I'm going to push the face a bit backward like this using the sculpting tools. Because sculpt, even if it's just polygons, is okay. Okay? So now we are starting to have a head, a base mesh for the head that looks a bit better. But the head is a bit wide, so what I'm going to do is to select the object and pressing SX and make it and I'm going to make it a bit um, sh shorter in length and I'm going to press Ctrl A to apply the scale. If I don't do this, if I'm looking at the, the, the scaling here, I don't have a uniform scale here and I don't want this. I want 111 here, so I'm going to press Ctrl A and apply the scale. And as you can see now, I have 111 here, but I'm still uh, keeping the um, I'm still keeping the, um, the scale of my object. So now one really important thing that will make the, the everything looks a bit better is to add the ears. So the ears are lying down this section here. Okay, this height. So we are going to do this right now. So let's go. I'm going to go to the side view. And uh, one thing that I want to do right away I don't want to wait for this. I'm going to remove this geometry. Okay, so we are going to add the ear. Um, and also this geometry is a bit clunky here. So I'm going to add a, a loop for the jaw. And this will give me the opportunity to go in the, in the bottom view by pressing Control 7. And it will give me the opportunity of pushing a bit back uh, the, the the bottom here and this is cool because it will define much better the jawline as you will see here I have an angle that is important in terms of shape so pushing points is what you do when you model a lot <laughs> as you can see. So now I still have my jawline here and it's well defined uh, because of this. So in fact, I have two jawlines. I have those two loops uh, make are making the, 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 the hardness, the, the sharp angle of the jawline. Okay. If I'm adding, for instance, on top of this a, a subdivision surface, 
you'll see it, it keeps a bit better the shape okay so let's go so now we are going to add the ear finally the ear okay so they are lying as i said between the height of the nose and the arcades or i don't know how to say this here i think it's arcades probably if it's not you've learned the french word <laughs> So I'm going to uh, select those faces and I'm going to extrude them. So now it's an alien. <laughs> I don't want this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to collapse those edges. So what is a collapse? A collapse, as you will see, you select an edge, you press X, edge collapse, and it merge the edge on, in one point. So if I'm going to do this with all those edges, edge collapse by pressing X, you have the option by pressing X, you can see that the, the edges have been pushed together. It's like if I've done this black and they're merging. Okay, so edge collapse. Then I can take the edges and I can push them back like this. It's really important in a base mesh to have the ears um, at an angle. Okay, the ears are uh, taking the sound uh, here for from from the front view because you mainly speak to people in front of you uh, you don't speak you you don't speak to people without facing them and so hence the fact that the ears are open towards your sight okay so now what i want to do is to add an edge loop here and the cool thing with this is that it will break the triangle here and if i'm scaling the new loop as you can see it will shape a bit the back of the ear like this so I will scale it a bit on the height and then I'm going to accommodate for my new geometry. Okay, so I want to push this a bit inside. Don't worry if you're moving something in the wrong way. There is no wrong in modeling, in poly modeling, because you can always push vertices um, back. So I'm going to add a loop here. And I'm going to slide this loop by pressing G twice. And I'm going to slide this loop by pressing G twice again. And same thing here, a bit to create, to accommodate for the, the different loops from the top. I'm so used to having the, in the preferences, the emulate three button mouse for selecting the, the loop. So I'm going to uh, press back emulate three button mouse. This allows me to double click on the edge loop to select it. Okay, so now that I have this loop in the middle, I can shape the, he the ear a bit. And I'm going to make it, to push it in the inside of the skull by selecting it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select uh, the faces here. I'm going to press Ctrl plus to increase my selection. And I'm going to scale the ear a bit and I'm going to press O to enter the proportional editing and I'm going to push the ear inside. Maybe rotate it a bit, scale it a bit and just adapt the geometry of this ear. Okay, but it's not finished now, of course, as you can see, it's pretty raw. Here, I want to have a better transition between the skull and the ear. So I'm going to spend a bit more time modeling. Modeling the ear. So here, I don't want this. I want to have a more straight loop. So I'm going to select it and rotate it. Same thing for here. To rotate it. Okay, starting to take shape. So now I'm going to select those faces, pressing I, I can add uh, an inset and I'm going to remove those faces and I'm going to create um, 
the inside of the ears. So in order to do this, I need to take into account the fact that this is the helix. The helix is the, the loop around the ear. And what I want to do is to uh, split this vertex in two. So I'm going to press V. And now I have this loop that I can put back inside the ear like this. And I can add a, ver a loop here and I can merge those vertices like this. And now what I can do is to select everything inside the, so the, the whole loop like this. And I can extrude it, scale it and push it inside. OK. Um, what I want to do now is to isolate the ear so it's easier to work with. So I'm going to press Control plus to select the geometry around it. I'm going to press slash on my numpad. It's not working. So I'm going to press Alt, uh, Alt, a, um, Shift H, sorry. <laughs> I had a blank. And uh, now I'm going to um, be able to model the inside of the ear a bit better. Okay, we are going there, it's okay. So the lower part is the lobe. So it's usually a bit bulky like this, inflated. So I'm going to try to approximate that like this. And one thing that is important is there is a Y here, a Y shape. So I'm going to extrude the internal parts uh, of the year of the ear so those two edges and i'm going to connect them to the bottom here i think so i'm first going to move this this geometry there and as you can see i don't have a lot of geometry here so it's going to be a bit um, tight so i'm going to select those edges connect them those edges connect them I'm going to add an edge here and I'm going to make the round part of uh, the ear like this and I'm going to try to push this outside and to approximate this shape okay so now what I want to do is to connect everything uh, back. So I'm going to select this, pressing F to connect the. This will give me the opportunity to, uh, to here, close it with a triangle. Again, in this case, the triangle is not our enemy. And then I'm going here to add a cut and it will lock um, we create a quad here a bit stretched so i'm going to push this quad this this uh, stretch crowd a bit higher and it's going to be okay fine for for us i think so or maybe not we are we're going to go back into the situation later but here what i want to do is to close everything uh, as much as possible like this. So I'm selecting an edge and pressing F, 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 F. The beauty of Blender shines here. And I'm going to add, to select those faces, pressing I in order to add the, um, a loop. I'm going to collapse this edge here. Oh, I cannot. Ah, sorry, edge collapse. And uh, I'm going to collapse this edge to edge collapse. I'm going to collapse this edge to edge collapse again. And I'm going to um, push this back a bit. Maybe I will collapse those edge. Mm. As you can see, I'm doing nothing. I'm doing nothing interesting there. So I'm going to come back. I don't have enough geometry to, to do this. Maybe this is something that I will do in sculpt. Uh, later for high poly, but I think in this situation I have the good, um, I have enough information for the person that will be using this uh, this base mesh. Yes. So one thing I wanted to do is to push a bit the geometry back here. So 
if I'm adding a, a loop, as you can see, it will revolve around a lot of things. Um, I don't, I, to be honest with you, I don't want this. So what I'm going to do is to maybe remove this face um, and remove this face. And I'm going to add the geometry that I want. One here, I'm going to scale it up a bit to create the thickness of the ear. And I'm going to try to find a way to close this. So I'm going to close it like this in this situation. And I'm going to do the same thing here. And the cool thing is that now I can add an edge that will stop right at the bottom like this. And the cool thing is that this new loop give me enough geometry to define a bit better the back here. So as you can see, I can push this back and create the bump behind the ear a bit better. It's a bit wonky, but mm, I think it's still very fine for a base mesh. Of course, I won't do exactly this with a retopology of a high poly. But as you can see for base mesh, I think it's okay. It defines the geometry a bit uh, better. So if I'm adding a subsurface, uh, a subdivision uh, surface, you can see that it uh, shows a bit the different parts. Uh, and we are good to go for this head for now. Maybe we'll come back a bit later with um, if we have more time at the end. So now what I want to do is to start extruding the neck. So in order to extrude the neck, what I'm going to do is to first move some vertices some vertex around this and I'm going to select this opening um, maybe I will be uh, um, <laughs> pushing some things like this so I'm, I'm going to count the number of ver vertex I've selected I have, I have 14 there so it means uh, 28 with the mirror so I think it's okay so more than enough and I'm going to extrude this okay and what I'm going to do with this is uh, I'm going to scale everything down to the size of the neck and I'm going to rotate it and I'm going to press right click loop tool circle to create a circle out of this if you don't have the loop tool circle option it means that you 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 didn't um, it means that you didn't enabled in the add-ons the loop tool, the mesh loop tools add-on. So I re highly recommend doing this. And uh, now you can see that I need to merge this. So I'm going to merge it with the mirror. And as you can see, I now have a neck. So I'm going to extrude the neck approximately like this, and I'm going to bend it like this. Okay, so the neck is more like this, okay? I'm going to add a edge loop in the middle and I'm going to accommodate for this new edge loop and I'm going to with the proportional editing make the head the back of the head a bit higher and I'm going to push the throat back and to uh, create a better looking shape for the and for the chin, sorry. So it's really important to have this um, skin um, part under the under the um, the jaw, uh, especially when you are drawing. A lot of times, uh, you d with drawings, you you don't see this this part on beginners drawing, and it's really not really uh, making the head like stuck on a stick and that's something that you, that you don't want and in modeling it's also important important sorry to have it so i'm doing it like this and now what i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to define the chest okay so let's get started with the chest soon <laughs> we have a lot of things to do okay so for the chest I have a simple approach, I'm going to show it to you. So the approach for me is to select the neck, to extrude it 
like this to widen it near the shoulders. Widen it a bit from the side. Basically creating this vase shape and then I'm going to push some vertices around like this. And this is called the shoulder girdle. It represents the clavicle from the bottom and the tra 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 uh, the trapezo trapezoid in English, I think. Muscles. Trapeze in French. <laughs> so I'm going to extrude now the chest. <laughs> like this. And I'm going to put my model up a bit. So now what I can do is to add some loops. So this will be the chest line. So uh, the bottom of the pectoral muscle. So I can rotate it a bit like this. And then I'm going to uh, create the opening of the arms. Behind I'm going to put this line inside a bit. Uh, here will be the C7 uh, ver um, vertebra, so cervical, I think. And uh, I'm going to put those vertices inside a bit, where here you have the trapezo trapezoid muscles that meets with the bottom of the neck. And what I don't like here is that I don't have the sternocleidomastoid muscles defined, but we are going to define them later. Don't worry. So we are going to uh, now extrude the arms. So in order to extrude the arms, what I want to do is to select um, uh, faces like this, and I'm going to rem well, remove them. <laughs> and this is going to be a good opening for the, the arms and especially the deltoid muscles. So I'm going to create a, a round shape using them. And I'm going to widen a bit this part. And don't worry, I'm going to add a loop there to accommodate for the shape. So now that I have this, uh, what I want, oh, in fact, I shouldn't have, uh, I shouldn't have uh, the, 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 vert the vertices. So I'm going to put them back. So in order to put them back, I can called the grid fill tool by pressing Control F grid fill. Okay. And what I want to do from this, I want to extrude, sorry. And now I want to rotate. It's going to create a cape like shape. And I want to add one loop here and one loop here. This uh, will define here the pectoral muscle, uh, the pectoral line, sorry, that will go around the deltoid muscle. And it will separate here the arm from the torso for a, a good deformation. And here it will give us enough geometry here, sorry, to start uh, extruding the arm. So I'm going to do this in a very crude way like this. So I'm going to extrude the arm and I'm going to delete this. Here I'm going to select this loop and pressing right click loop tool circle to have like a circle for the arm. And I'm going to press control plus many times in order to select a few vertex, a few vertices, I'm going to go in the X-ray mode in order to deselect the bottom here by pressing B and using the middle mouse button. And now what I will do is to press right click and smooth verte vertices. And as you can see, everything will start to take shape a bit better. So now I can go in the sculpt mode, I can smooth a bit the chest line too. If the smooth is too strong, you can go here uh, using this brush, not this brush, but they changed the icon, so I'm a bit lost. Uh, smooth, and you can here in the tools or here change the strength to be a bit lower. And now using the grab tool, I can start to shape the chest a bit. So as you can see, I can push the, I can push the, the um, chest muscle. I can widen the deltoids 
I really encourage you to look at references in this case, anatomy references. So it's just a matter of pushing the shoulders into the right place. Here you have a small depression And we don't have the clavicles right now, so we are going to do them soon. Don't worry. Okay, so if you want to, you can also inflate using the I key in sculpt mode to make the armpit a bit closer, the, the geometry of the armpit a bit closer, like this. And I think we are good to go. So now back into edit mode, I'm going to add a line for the pecs and I'm going also to shape the clavicles. So I know for sure that the clavicles will be uh, connected to the deltoid. So it's something like this. Okay. So in order to do this, I'm going to destroy a bit the geometry that I have and I'm going to create a link like this. Okay, a triangle. And then I'm going to connect some things back a bit. And anyway, I'm going to destroy this geometry because I want the sternocleidomastoid muscle to come back later. So I'm going to add a line here for the clavicles. And I'm going to create to destroy some part of this geometry there to connect the clavicles using uh, with the, um, the sternocleidomastoid muscles. So sternocleidomastoid muscles are coming from behind the neck toward the clavicles. So I'm going to destroy this and I'm going to, to rotate this geometry like this so it can connect in the front of the neck and same thing for, for, for this. So. I'm going to select this, those faces, I'm going to connect them. And as you can see, it follows like behind the here and, and huh, I made, a I made a mistake. It's not those geometry, those, this geometry, sorry. So I'm going to remove this and I'm going to take this one here. And this one that connects behind the here is going to connect to this one. So as you can see, it will be a bit stretched, but we are trying to, we are going to try to accommodate for this. Okay. So now that I have this, I'm going to um, try to fill the gaps there. So it's not going to be easy, of course, because uh, as you can see, I have like big polygons there. So one way of doing this is to add to find ways to add geometry that flows there. So, mm -hmm. so we are going to try this. So I don't want to lose this for sure because it's the line that I'm going to define. So I'm going to push it even more. Maybe I can join those two vertices right now. So merge at last like this. And one good thing will have been to destroy even this and to make faces pop. So I'm going to make a face out of nowhere because I'm using the F2 add-on. So if I'm pressing F while having this vertex selected, as you can see, it creates a new face that I can place. And I'm going to follow the shape like this. So I have doubled the sternocleidomastoid muscles. So now what I want to do is to uh, connect with the rest. So maybe I can already, you see, destroy this geometry. So I've totally destroyed my neck here. I know for sure that this will connect there. So I can still keep this. And now I want to maybe follow with the rest of the geometry here. I'm going to, under the neck, I'm going to add a a, uh, a, a loop here and I'm going to connect it by pressing right click and the merge vertex here at first or at last, whatever. I'm going to isolate the geometry I'm working in, I'm working with because it's 
otherwise a nightmare to see from below. And I'm going to for sure connect this to this, but I need some geometry. So I'm going to make everything reappear and add a loop there. And I'm going to come back here, connect this to this. Okay, we'll deal with the loop later of the chest. And now I'm going to uh, can try to connect everything. So here I have this loop that will connect to this in fact. So I'm going to add a loop there and a loop there and another loop there. And if you see here, I can create this. So this will define the Adam apple. And um, if I'm adding another loop there, I can connect those two vert vertis vertices there. And I have the geometry here to create this, to fill this and to fill this gap there. Okay. So basically what I'm creating here is this loop. I'm creating this, this that follows everything. This is straight, so it follows everything. And now I need to fill the gaps there. So one way to fill the gaps here is to define the tra trapezoid muscles. Uh, a bit better. So I imagine the trapezoid muscles coming from there to the back. So I'm going to make using the F2 add-on some geometry going there. So I'm going to add a cut there. Well, sorry, up like this. And I'm going to push this geometry back a bit. So now maybe I can do this, this, this. And I think we are good to close this here using a new cut here. I can push this like this, this, this. Uh, and as you can see, I'm not in the right shape here. But remember that I've added a loop here in the middle. I can remove this one. So I'm selecting the vertices, pressing X edge loop. And uh, now the last thing that I need to do is to find a way to connect this loop uh, back. But maybe what I can do is to select all those edges and collapse them. So sorry, X edge collapse. And now I have a quad here and I've solved my issue like this. <laughs> so it's even simpler. And as you can see now, I have like a geometry that is like close to be uh, good enough for what we want to do. So I'm going to go back in the sculpt mode and now I'm going to smooth a bit everything. I'm going to put the sternocleidomastoid a bit in front from this side, this view. I'm going to accommodate for everything, in fact, for all the topology that I created. Put the throat a bit in front. The cool thing is that if I want to, I can add uh, some loops uh, here, for instance. But it's going, it's going through the jaw. It's not, it's not that ideal, but I think it's still okay. So don't worry. This is something that if you want to, you can accommodate. But in my case, I, I prefer to have the muscle defined and having less geometry. I'm not really happy with the fact that this flows like this. I would have preferred to have uh, a loop. Um. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to go through this a bit later if needed, because right now I still need to define the rest. I think it's more important to define the rest right now. Uh, so I'm going to shift uh, click there to smooth the front, widen a bit the geometry using the sculpt mode again. And I'm going to, I can even use the, the draw, the draw tool to, to push a bit the forms like this. So for the chest, what I want to do is to add a new cut here and I want to just define here the, the chest muscle in a very easy way. Put some vertices here a bit 
in the back to create the armpit. And to define the deltoid muscle a bit better. So deltoids are more straight on the top, straight a bit on the top part, and you have a depression like this. It's not round, it's not a, it's, if you want to make a, a cartoon, maybe it could be round, rounder, but in this case, it's not round. So I'm going to smooth the vertices a bit here, like this, and as you can see, it defines, I think the, the line is well defined there, so it's okay. I'm not going to be that precise for the rest of the muscles, but I think what we've done here is important because it connects the important muscles for with the head and um, and uh, and the chest. But I'm not going to define every muscles for the chest. Okay. Because it's still a base mesh, remember, it's not a, an anatomical, anatomy modeling uh, <laughs> challenge. <laughs> so this should be a bit inside, meaning that the line, the chest line should, a chest line should be added here. So I've created a wrong, um, uh, wrong direction here. So I'm going to push this back. So the armpit is there. And as you can see, I'm going to push this a bit back here it's the it's the um, the, co the coastal part of the of the um, chest muscle of the pecs and the deltoid could be a bit wider from the top view And here you have a small gap. It could be emphasized like this. So, okay, we are on our way, I think. Okay, so maybe I can de-emphasize a bit the, the, the pegs like this. Okay, so. Let's continue. Uh, now we are going to extrude the lower chest a bit more, once more, and we are going to define the obliques there, and we are going to define the pelvic line. So I'm going to do this, and I'm going to add some geometry there inside, some cuts. And here I have a loop of um, 15 here I have a loop of 10 so maybe I can um, remove two loops there to have a loop of here 13 maybe 12 it's going to be better so I, now I have 14 sorry in this case and uh, I think it's a bit too much so let me check if I can remove some lines I don't think I can easily right now, but maybe what I can do is to double this line. So here, as you can see, I was not cautious of the fact that I, had, I have a mirror, so I need to remove the clipping. And I'm going to add another line to double the, the center line here. Okay. This will help me to define the, the butt area later, anyway. So, I'm going to select everything there. So I have 12 vertices and I'm going to extrude them and I'm going to select now everything from the bottom and to smooth everything and I'm going to redo it with clipping. <laughs> and I'm, I can also scale around the normals by pressing Alt S and this helps to add more geometry. Okay, so now I'm going to push this a bit lower and I'm going to define uh, with loops the rest of the body, basically. So now it will be more a matter of like 
having the right loops for the butt and having the, the abdominal muscles and to define the legs and, and a lot of things. So we are going to dive into details right now for everything. So what I want to do is to first remove this loop, in fact, because before this, I want to define the butt area uh, in terms of topology. So I'm going to move up a bit the pelvis line and I'm going to add one line here in the middle and I want to have here what we call the butterfly and the butterfly shape at the end of the pelvis is being seen a lot so you see two dimples usually uh, from the back and that's what I'm trying to shape here and I'm going from the side to put a shape like this that is called the iliac crest and this represents the top part of the pelvis okay so I'm going to do this and as you can see I have a nice flowing geometry like this and this is important this is the oblique muscles that are uh, pushing your um, twisting your torso sorry making your torso twist so they are they they attach there and they attach from the back and the, the fact that it twists it, it it gives the ability to to twist and now i want to define um so the iliac crest sorry so that's what i'm doing here and now what i'm going to do with this is uh so it's a bit the the, the torso is a bit squared so i'm going to round it a bit from a different view from the bottom view here and what I'm going to do is to um, uh, to, 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 to uh, create the topology of the of the butt line, <laughs> basically. So to do this, I'm going to select uh, one edge here, and I'm going to extrude it. Wow, sorry, remove the proportionality thing, and I'm going to rotate it, and I'm going to follow the uh, line of the of the butt. So I'm going to select this loop, make it a bit lower, I'm going to add a loop that will connect to the loop that we just extruded, like this. And this will be an important topological line, uh, so I'm going to make it a bit, uh, mm, to, to make it fit a bit more, and this is this one, okay, and it will define the area of will separate the area of the um, of the butt. So now I need to have a flowing geometry. So this line uh, is twisting, so I don't like this. So it's important to have no twisting geometry. So this one is not twisting, but the side one is twisting. So I probably will be able to reconnect this one with this one so I'm connecting this one to this one then I can add here a, a geometry um, a, a cut and I can merge everything there then I can add a cut here and I can fill the gap here with quads so now you have this line that that connects correctly and I have this line that connects correctly and here I have this line that connects correctly and defines here the um, I don't remember the names of the the two muscles here that are very straight, uh, but um, the, I think it's the yeah I don't remember the name. Sorry for this one. Here I have this that should connect to should connect to this. So I'm going to merge those two vertices here, and I can push this a bit back. And as you can see, I don't have a lot of geometry, so I will change my mind according to the, the connection line. I will make it a bit forward. So I'm going to take this one instead. And now I can fill the gaps there. Okay, so I have this line finally. This line that flows, this line that flows, this, this line that flows and connects, this line that flows and connects, and this line that flows and, and connects. But here I need more geometry, of course, so I can freely add a, a line there. And as you can see, it will 
uh, make the trick perfectly, I think. So now I have this loop that is still 12 vertices, so I can now extrude it, flatten it right now, it will change, don't worry. But this gives me access to a nice uh, base mesh topology for now. So what I'm going to do is to simply um, make the lines flow a bit better and I'm going to go in the sculpt mode and I'm going to smooth everything there. And I'm going to, using the grab, I'm going to push things a bit and shape things simply. So from the side, we should see a, a nice round shape here, a bit flat on the top, and we should see the back muscles poking through there a bit, and this, those shoulders could be a bit further away like this. I think it's going there. We are going there. Slowly, but it's taking shape. So we don't have the clav the we don't have the um, scapula uh, scapula defined. Uh, this is something that we can uh, define if we want to. So how can we approach this? Maybe it's simply by, so we have this line, we have this line, and I want to just connect those lines together. So maybe I can remove this and I can push this back a bit and I can select this, uh, this and extrude a new face like this and join those faces by pressing merge vertex at first. And as you can see, we now have the scapula defined here. So I can connect this back and, oh, sorry, like this. And I can add a loop there and I can fill the gaps like this. The only thing I don't like with this idea is that now here I have a, um, a pull that I may not want. So maybe I will come back to what I had, but in the order, hmm. But the, the, the good thing is that it still defines pretty well the, the scapula. So for now, I'm, I'm going to stay with this, but maybe I'm going to change this a bit later. So the scapula should um, be more pointier. and is approximate, approximately the height of half of the ribcage. You can push it a bit and it's not only the scapula, it's uh, the scapula and the, uh, the and different muscles that are uh, attached to it. But for now we can do this, okay? So if we shade smooth the character, you can see that it pops a bit through and that if we add a subdued interface, it adds a nice shape to it, okay? So let's continue with our modeling process. So I'm going to add um, to shape a bit better the torso. So here I can freely add Oops, as you can see, and I'm going to add the oblique muscles of it, the, the dorsal muscle, latissimus dorsal, they are called, I think, in English and uh, or in Latin. <laughs> I'm going to make this a bit toward the inside because it flows inside 
from an anatomy standpoint here, the external oblique are flowing back inside the back. A bit like this. It's not exactly like this, but uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a good um, beginning for your base mesh. Usually the for a male it's a bit squarish in terms of shape around the butt. And here I think the butt is a bit low. So I'm going to rotate it using this loop. And I want a nice S shape for the back. Okay. The head is a bit um bit tall in this case. I'm going to push the neck a bit backward and I'm going to make the, the chest muscle a bit um, a bit forward and I'm going to scale the head. So I can press C to select the head with the X-ray and I can scale the head a bit and when I'm scaling it I need also to push it inside a bit. Remember that it's 3D. So it's not perfect like this. So I'm going to control Z and we'll see that too uh, later. But the head for sure is a bit high. So I'm going to make it lower. To push it lower. To push it lower. I'm going to make the trapezius trapezoid muscle a bit prominent, a bit more prominent prominent. And I'm going to select the head bit higher like this. It's just a matter of like looking through each view and to find the best adjustment. But I think we are going there. So next thing is to add the apps. So I'm going to select all those polygons, I think. Maybe, maybe one more and I'm going to press I to inset and now I'm going to shape the abs I'm going to add a line there that can, that I can scale a bit will help me define uh, the pelvis area that I can smooth a bit maybe I can smooth everything around here the butt so right click smooth vertices it will help me define a bit better the ilia crest and for the um, abs i can push them a bit inside at the end and i'm going to poke a bit the vertices from the front I'm going also to select the center line here, even for the chest, and I'm going to push it back a bit like this to define, oh sorry, not on the Z axis, but on the Y axis to define the center line of the chest a bit more. And this will help me to define, to suggest the ab muscle, but at the end, here I'm going to smooth everything because we don't see usually the center line at, at this uh, uh, in the lower section of the abs. I'm going to scale them back along the normals. So I think the obliques could be a bit more prominent here. They are also called the love handles for males. And um, we can separate here a bit more the back from the front. Here we should have what we call the serratus muscles but we won't define them. Usually that's the part 
that you do with sculpt. You can push the first pair of apps a bit. Maybe we can smooth here a bit the, 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 the thing. The idea is not to, to sculpt the, the anatomy at this point. It's just to help for the next stage, which is sculpting usually. Okay. So now what we have to do is to extrude the arms and the legs. So for the legs, they are a bit thin. So I'm going to select the, the, the geometry of the legs and I'm going to put them a bit wider and I'm going to select the lower part of the legs and I'm going to put the leg right at the bottom like this and I'm going to scale at the ankle. Okay, this will help me define the proportions. So I'm going to make it a bit higher like this. So if I'm taking the height of the of the chest, it's approximately the height of the legs. I think it's okay like this. And we are going to add the knee that I'm going to flat. So scale on the Z axis. And we are going to push everything back like this. So first thing I'm going to do is to add a few cuts at the thigh and at the lower leg. And if I'm looking through the mesh here, I can also like add three cuts for the for the knee, where the knee will be. And now it's just a matter of sculpting the, the shapes. So I'm going to add the calf, the calf's muscles. I'm going to define the thigh here a bit better where the quads should be in front. Remember that the legs attach attaches to the um, to the area crest here and it's not di directly connected to the um, to the chest. I'm going to define the those lines that are representing the lower quads here. And I'm going to leave proportional editing to define a bit better the quads, talking about them. Define a bit better the pelvis line. Here we have the adductors, abductors, sorry in English. Here I can compress a bit more the geometry because it's where we have the oblique that folds over the ila, at the iliac crest. Here we have the great trochanter, uh, then the fasciolata. We're going to define a bit better later. I'm going to try to have here, at least from here to here. So selecting this vertex, control clicking this vertex to select the path between this vertex. I'm going to try to have a more, a more rounder leg by sliding around the geometry. In this case, you can see that it's, bit, it's a bit flat, so I can push from this view using G the, the 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 loop same for here inside i can like push it back a bit and the idea is to find the shapes so now what i'm going to do is to work on the knee so i'm going to open the knee simply like this and what i want to do is to also suggest the um, the tibial the tibia part like this, so it's a very important muscle, of the, uh, important bone of the lower leg. I'm going to add another cut maybe here to in, in, put um, 
even more the shape of the quads, the lower quads here. And here I'm going to slide this a bit higher, like this. So the, the butt area is not really well defined, I think. So this is something that we could adjust. Should not be up; should be down at this at this point. So, hence the fact that I'm reversing the curve here. Like this, it starts to look a bit logical. I'm going to push this back up a bit. As you can see, it's more V-shaped like this. Here we should have the dimples that I've talked about. Here we have the obliques. Yeah, I think it's a bit better like this, a bit well, a bit better defined. So I'm really sorry. I had a, I had a recording issue, uh, and um, I'm just showing you uh, what misses what I've done. Uh, so you can follow along, but don't worry, it's not uh, very complex complex to do. I've just uh, pushed some vertices uh, um, along. Uh, what I've done is I've created this loop uh, that moves back to the arm, okay, as you can see, and um, I've split the, the arm there, uh, and now here I have um, 12 vertices in the arm because I also added a loop here and this loop was simply added by pressing ctrl R and as you can see it goes inside the throat. I will also change as you can see the matcap. Don't worry I didn't change a lot of things I've just I think I've, I, I just missed 10 minutes or between 5 and 10 minutes of work so it's not that that much. Uh, as you can see I've added the loop there uh, and also, I've um, shapen, I've, I've worked a bit on the on the legs. Just uh, I've uh, pushed the the knee like this. Um, what else I've I've done? I think it, that that's all. That's that's all what I've done compared to the last part that you saw. So I've also, yes, sorry, I've also extruded the, the, the leg uh, a bit more and the foot like this. So the foot uh, is pretty easy to do. As you can see, I, I just stopped there and um, I've just extruded a few times. As you can see, it's not that hard to do. And uh, what I want to do is uh, I want to isolate the foot. So I'm going to select the foot, pressing Shift H, and uh, I'm going to um, I'm going to extrude the toes. So this shape is really, in fact, easy to do. If you were following with me along, um, uh, you can of course take a few minutes and, and, and extrude the foot like this. Don't worry if you arrive at this point; it's probably that you know how to do this shape. Okay, so now I'm going to remove the bottom here. So I have the toes part and I have the everything uh, for the foot and I can select the foot and I can press and I can right click smooth vertices. Okay, so it gives me a good starting point for the foot. So I can flatten this shape a bit and I will um, go into sculpt mode right now. So I'm going to sculpt the, f the shape of the foot, pushing the toes forward a bit. I'm going to uh, flatten a bit the top because it's too high in my opinion. And I'm going to put push the toes a bit up, even it's, if it's not the case in the real world in a bare foot, but it's looking good, so why not? And I'm going to go in the bottom view and I'm going to widen the toes part. I can also use the proportional editing for doing this more precisely. And as you can see, I'm going to shape 
the food a bit better. So now I'm going to um, make this a bit higher, like this. And we are not going to model each toes, but don't worry for the ends, we are going to model the, the fingers. But for the toes, because usually they are so close to each other and you don't want to sculpt them separately, uh, I'm going to leave them to, uh, to the sculpting part. So I'm going to scale a loop here. That will, that will help me to better define the foot shape, the foot connection. And now I'm going to select this, select this, pressing F to feel the shape. I'm going to add two loops there and I'm going to fill there. I'm going to fill those triangles. Adding a cut right there gives me a quads. And I'm going to extrude like this a loop around okay so i'm selecting a vertex pressing f vertex f vertex f vertex f basically i'm creating the the contour of the foot the border of the foot and finally i can close this so i have this loop and inside i hope i can feel it if it's not the case don't worry i will find a solution. So the solution is to fill this and to fill this. In fact, I could fill everything. So I'm pretty happy right now. Okay. So now I, now I have uh, a closed shape, a closed, a closed uh, foot. What I can do is select everything from the bottom and I can press SZ0 to, flat, to flatten everything. I can make it a bit high higher like this and I can add an edge loop in the middle and I can push this edge loop along uh, the normal by pressing Alt S and I am uh, I'm pretty good to go with the foot shape like this. One last thing or not the last thing sorry but one thing that I can do is um, I can make the, um, the slope a bit more um, important on the pinky side like this so as you can see it's flowing like this more so i can emphasize the arch of the foot right there i can also lower the small toes right there And I can again emphasize the arch of the foot. So here I can also add an edge loop that will help that will help me define the arch, the inner arch of the foot like this. And I'm Good to go with this I think this for what I need to do again in the context of a base mesh maybe the foot is a bit high so I'm going to select the ankle and with proportional editing I'm going to lower it a bit and I can select everything and make it go higher like this touch the ground I think I'm in a good situation like this in a better situation at least and I can also, using proportional editing and a, a, a bigger radius, I can rotate a bit the foot by pressing R and Z. And as you can see, it gives a more um, organic, organic um, shape to the bottom leg. So from the bottom view, I can arrange the um, okay 
the heal, sorry. <laughs> I was looking for the ward. Um, and I can also make this a bit straighter at the back side of the leg because here we have a tendon that connects to the gastrocnemius muscles that are there. If I can a bit, that we can work a bit, by the way. Maybe I can push this a bit higher and like make my model a bit better like this. I think it's looking better like this okay so I'm going to add another cut here and this cut will help me define the uh, two picks that we have in the ankle due to the tibia and the bone next to it. I don't remember the name in English, sorry. And the inner one, so this one is higher when seen from the front view than the other one. And a small trick to remember this is that here it's fl it flows like this, here it flows like this, and here it flows the opposite. Can add another cut here. And I don't want this to happen from the, the side view, so I'm going to compensate this loop there and here too. Okay, so maybe one thing that I can do is to select those protrusions there and I can press H to hide them. And this will give me access to the rest of the geometry that, it can, that I can smooth. So I'm going to smooth everything else. And maybe I can like scale it a bit and I can press Alt H to make the rest come back. Okay. So it's a bit high, so what I'm going to do is to select this loop, those loops. I'm going to use the proportional editing again, and I'm going to make it a bit lower. I think that the heel could be wider, so I'm going to select those two vertices, and I'm going to scale them on the X axis, and I can push Put this the, the the inside of the foot a bit inside a bit more inside and I can like shape the toes a bit better like this again this is a matter of time and for now I think it will do the trick so one other one other one other thing sorry that I want to do is to add um, a cut there. So I will like slide this one. And the idea with this is that I can push the toes, create, create the toes a bit lower like this to create a, a gap. And I want to um, emphasize the fact that the toes are separated from the rest. So I'm going to, without the proportional editing, I'm going to model this a bit better maybe then the toes are a bit long longer that they, than they should be. So I'm going to flatten them a bit and pushing them back. I'm going to rotate them just a bit. And here you can see that the arch is not well defined. So I'm going to go into sculpt mode and I'm going to 
smooth everything a bit and I'm going to use the grab tool using pressing G to compensate for this and I'm going to smooth a bit the, the shapes the arch and I think for the time we spent and the the goal of this tutorial it's going to be pretty much it I'm going to push the gastrocnemius muscle a bit more using the grab brush again I'm trying to follow this shape here I'm going to try to connect the muscle a bit better but I don't have that much geometry so I can smooth a bit and this is something that could be done easy e in a much easier way when sculpting so I'm going to let that for the sculpting apart and I'm going to press the uh, to use the inflate brush to add more thickness to the lower leg and I think that the foot could be a bit larger so I'm going to do this like this and I'm going to use proportional editing to push the, the heel back a bit and yeah, maybe the, <laughs> the foot is a bit now it's a bit too much so I'm going to undo what I've done a bit okay so we are making good progress I think so now the next thing to do is to extrude the arms so let's go for the arms so I'm going to select the arm and I'm first going to rotate it a bit like this and now I'm going to push this vertex inside of it and I'm going to extrude the arms like this remember that uh, they should the end the hand should be at the middle of the thigh like this so this is the hand so I'm going to put this so this is the the wrist approximately yeah? you need to, to to judge by yourself but I think it's okay like this I'm going to push the arm a bit back a bit back to create the bend where the elbow is and I'm going to here walk a bit on the deltoids and the uh, same thing then for the legs I'm going to add joints around the elbow so the elbow is going to be there so I can shape it a bit so you need to be um, informed that this is a topology for base mesh this is not a topology for a final um, animation so I'm not uh, using the same techniques when modeling a base mesh and when modeling a character for uh, animation so in this case the loops are pretty easy they are they are straight meaning that they are uh, following cylindrical shapes they are not defining the muscles uh, a lot so for instance here I will do this to rotate the arm but I won't be uh, doing the brachioradial muscle and define the this shape uh, here I, I won't do this because it's not the the purpose of this but I will approximate the shape as much as I can using this uh, topology so now I will like push a bit the triceps back here I have the bicep and the bicep is not round it's a tube like shape it's very flat from the from the top view 
here we can select this edge and push it a bit inside and same for here because we can see the triceps from the front and from the back so i can select those points and push them a bit like this here those two points i can scale them together to make them a bit pinched and as you can see already it starts to to take shape so what i want to do from now for now sorry is to select this those three loops and to smooth them a bit and i want to to flatten the the arm from this view a bit because in fact from the front view from the front view the arm looks like a cylinder but from the top view it's it's flat here in the lower arm in the forearm and it's like wider near the triceps bicep area so here we have a tendon i really encourage you to to look at a anatomy reference like an écorché or something like this because you will be able to better understand what i'm talking about if you don't already know your anatomy so here i'm defining the tricep and now what we can do is uh, so first thing to note is that the the deltoid should lay should be at the level of the lower pectoral muscle so i'm going to push the pecs a bit higher like this so it makes more sense i think i'm also going to push this line higher in order to make a new line inside a new loop inside that i will push along the normal by pressing alt s and i'm going also here before going back to the arm to define the, um, the clavicle a bit better maybe what i can do is to mm, to push this line closer to the clavicle and to cut it no it's not it's not going to be looking right so what i can do is maybe take the opposite approach maybe push this back Here at the pit of the neck, I'm going to push this back too. And I'm going to select this line as the clavicle. And as you can see, it's probably going to do the job yeah, a bit better. And I'm going to, from the front view, lower down the level of the clavicle. So it's from the front view, it's a bit straight a bit straighter like this so one thing more that i want to do is to try to i'm going to remove this and i'm this one too i'm going to try to push the clavicle even more into the deltoid which is the case in the real world so i'm going to push the clavicle right there and i'm going to try to accommodate for my new uh, topology so here i'm going to close this here i'm going to close this Probably I can do this like this. Okay, so now I have the I have a real clavicle shape that looks more like um, a bike. Um, how can I say how how it's called? How is it called this? You know the bike um, handles. I think it's bike handles probably. So it looks like it looks like this. It's 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 more yeah from the top view it's more like a bike handle and from the front view it's more straight okay so the pecs are a bit exaggerated so i'm going to push them back here i want to make an, an extreme muscular guy Maybe I can also like select the whole arm by pressing Ctrl plus. No, uh, selecting the whole arm approximately. Maybe I can make the arm go back a bit to the front. I think now we are in a better shape too. 
going to the chest muscle and to and to the rest of the of the arm. Okay. So I can push those vertices a bit back to to overlap the tricep area. I can maybe add another cut because you know what? I think it's one cut won't be enough, so I can add cuts there too to have a better definition of the tricep area and to have a better definition of the bicep area. Bicep and tricep. So now we are in a better situation, I think. So, okay. Okay, so now the um, last part in terms of like topology and then we'll polish everything that we need to know. You are afraid maybe of it. Uh, you shouldn't. It's the hand. And the hand, yes, of course, hands are not uh, extremely fun to do, but they are simple enough for a base mesh to do. Okay, so let's dive into the end. <laughs> okay so to do the ends what we are going to to start with is to extrude uh, the ends in a um, in a front direction because when you rig a character uh, like this you want to have the anatomical um, uh, stand Meaning that we will do the hand with the thumb here and the hand like this. Oh, with, a, with a mouse, it's really hard to, to draw. But why I'm doing this? It's because it's because if I would have if, if I if I did the hand like this, with the thumb going forward like this, I would have to turn this geometry to twist the geometry like this to create uh, the, the 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 twist in the hand and I don't want to do this at this at this stage if when sculpting you want to do this you can but if you don't want and in the majority of the cases you don't want you won't be bothered with twisting geometry with uh, twisting geometry okay so let's go And we'll of course define the arm a bit better later, but it's not the, the time right now. So I'm just going to add a few cuts just to say this is biceps a bit in front. Okay, so let's go. So first I'm going to extrude the wrist and then I'm going to extrude what will become the hand. And I'm going to select this geometry, pressing P to separate it I'm going to remove the mirror and I'm going to press slash in order to enter into isolate mode with only this object so I won't be bothered with the other hand from um, from another perspective. And what I can do from now is I can rotate so it is aligned with uh, one of the axes. So I can flat this, I can flat this, I can remove even the wrist there because I, I, we will be attaching it later. But the only thing that is important is that we know that we are going to uh, to be with the same amount of vertices here than we have in the um, in the arm to connect the shape shapes. So now what we want to do is to extrude the fingers. So the first thing I'm going to do is to add few geometry there. Uh, I'm I know that the the thumb will be uh, will be probably going uh, probably going there. Don't hesitate to use your own hand as a reference. So I know that I will have the thumb like this. So the thumb. You know what? I'm going to model the hand in the other. 
uh, in the other direction and I'm going to um, flip it later because I prefer to do this. Um, so the thumb will be approximately like this. So, whoa, <laughs> sorry, I'm extruding something like that makes no sense here. So I'm going to right click and make it as a circle, this, this part. Okay. So now I'm going to select everything by pressing Ctrl I, everything else, and I'm going to go into vertex mode to access the smooth vertex uh, thing. I'm going to press Ctrl, Ctrl minus to remove the one loop, and I'm going to smooth everything else. And now I can extrude from this the thumb. I'm going to make it a bit wider because it's the you know it's the the meat inside there. I'm going to extrude the thumb like like this. Again, don't worry, we are, we will adjust everything later. So now what I will do is I will try to connect loops. So I'm going to connect those loops together. Those loops, those loops, those, this and this. One, two, three, four. Um, one, two, three. And I want the same amount of geometry there. So. Instead, I'm going to take another approach. I'm going to try to extrude things like this. Even though it's not perfect, but I'm going to try to follow this loop across all the finger. We'll see. So now I have this loop. And now the good th the good news with this is that I have, I think, enough geometry to define the fingers a bit better. Indeed, what I can do is Select this loop, make it like this a bit. So now I can select what will become the fingers later and I can scale it a bit. In fact, let me select this thing. So it's going to be faster. And I can now readjust everything. And I can select those faces, make them a circle. And I can now extrude a finger like this. So now from the side view, this will be the index finger. What I can do is cut this finger in half and I can cut it again in half, but there. So this will be where the, um, the joint will be. So I can add the joints and I can the knuckles, push them a bit, add the fat below like this. You can add a, just a simple cut there to distinguish the finger from the rest. And I can also add a cut in the middle just to have the, the shape. Here I will add this cut to create the shape of the nail. And overall, this is a simple finger that we can create. I will scale it like this from this view. Yeah, the idea is to create a simple shape of a finger like this. So now that I have this shape, I can select it. Maybe keep pressing Ctrl plus once again. And I can uh, duplicate it. So I'm going 
to go in the back view, I'm going to duplicate one time this finger and scale it. And I'm going to try to connect it. So first, what I want to do is to add a, a, a cut in between everything there. So I have a good separation between the fingers and we'll see how to later remove the, the, ex, the, the amount of geometry that we don't need. So I'm going to remove this and I'm going to connect the finger. So I'm going to remove this loop, select the finger there. Maybe I can scale it a bit along the normals and I'm going to do the same thing for this one. So let me control plus this and pressing Alt S. It's going to help me a bit with the, the view. And I'm going to select this, I'm going to select this, and I'm going to first try to create a circle with this. No, it's not going to work pretty well. So I'm going to push this a bit inside like this. A bit inside like this. Remember that it should be a round shape, kind of. And now I can connect. Uh, using the bridge, which is in the um, right click when you when you are in uh, edge mode. So bridge edge loops. Okay. So once we're there, we can accommodate for the bridge topology. Okay. And we will have to refine everything yeah, later, so don't worry. So now the last one, the next one, sorry, is a bit smaller. And I'm going to select this whole finger. I'm going to rotate it a bit. So it makes more sense. Okay, so this one from the bottom, I'm going to put the finger next to it. I'm going to try to prepare the opening of the finger a bit better. And I'm going to select this, select this, and bridge everything. It's starting to take shape right there. Maybe uh, I can rotate this a bit. And at this point, I'm not worrying about anything about shapes. Huh? Okay, it's just for now the just a matter of connecting things and playing around with the the topology. And we'll see later what we need to do in terms of shapes to have a better looking hand. And the last finger, the pinky finger, is a bit smaller, so I can scale it directly. And I will connect it like this. So right click, bridge edge loop, and I shall be all right. So now I'm at the point where we can start to uh, think about how to model good looking or at least better looking fingers. So for sure, I want this part to be angled. So if you look at your own hand, you will see that you have a, a webbing in, uh, in between the fingers. And uh, they are uh, dilating on more of on the top part of your palm. And they are shorter on the inside. So I'm doing this here. So as you can see, I'm pushing this geometry back here. 
we have finger pads that won't be super defined there, but we can put them a bit, push them a bit, sorry. And one thing that I didn't do is the, the thumb. So in order to add the thumb, what I can do is like, um, go to the, to the front of the thumb. So the thumb is oriented a bit like this. And I'm going to add my loops around the thumb. So note that for the thumb, you only have one um, joint visible. So I can do this and I'm going to select the whole thumb and like pressing right click and smooth vertices a bit like this. And using proportional editing, I can adjust the different parts. So I'm going to try to force inside here the thumb a bit to have the, the shape of the, the palm bit more pronounced. Trying to get the connection between the thumb and the index finger a bit nicer. I know it's hard to do this with a uh, few geometry, a few, few polygons, but you can smooth, you see the transition a bit like this to do it a bit much So, um, now what I want to do is to describe a bit better the, um, so I'm going to take the pinky finger and I'm going to push it a bit inside because I want to describe the nice arching of the finger curve like this. So this motion here. And um, what I want to do now is to, I'm, I'm sure that you all wonder how I'm going to, to, to create this end. So I'm going to first collapse the vertices here that I created and that I know won't be able to make it for the RM. going to re-emphasize the wedding there, the webbing there, so not the wedding. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to collapse those edges again. And maybe those, you know what? So now I have many solutions. So one of them is to here create some, some quads like this. But for now, I have to still edge collapse here, my geometry, even from the front. And I think here, if I'm doing this, it will probably work. But here you can see I can walk it around it. And here I can create a quad. So the cool thing with this technique is that I've solved my geometry only with quads. Um, the only thing that I'm not very fan a fan of is this, so I can maybe push it there a bit higher to create this and to here have the, um, how can I say, the, the, the hole in the middle of the finger, like the, the palm of the finger. And I think it's a bit wider, so that me make it wider. And what I can do from now on is maybe so same thing here, I'm not very, I'm very, not very a, a fan of what I've done there. So I'm going to remove this, those uh, vertex, those one, and I'm going to make this 
higher this joint thing higher there so like this i think it's better and what if uh yeah no yes i think it's going to be enough for this so now what i will do is uh, of course try i'm going to try to to smooth everything out so i'm going to select this uh, this uh, part of the of the end i'm going to smooth it a bit like this and uh, here i'm not very fan again of this i, I in fact I, I should have pushed everything up a bit so it lines up with the rest of the end so now it's much better, I think, in terms of like flow of topology, as you can see. And I can also add a, a smooth to everything, and I can use the push along uh, the normals a bit. This adds a bit to the to the geometry of the end, and I can add a a, a nice line here that will give me access to more geometry to add the the pads. At the, at the bottom of the fingers and as you can see I can also push the wet bing aspect <laughs> of the hand and uh, this will make the hand more realistic. The pinky finger is a bit still um, high so what I can do is I can create a, a coordinate system based on the direction of the finger. So I'm going to select an edge here and I'm going to click plus there to add um, an edge direction. So if I'm selecting a gizmo, you can see that the gizmo is aligned to this edge. Uh, the cool thing is that now I can select everything and if I'm scaling, um, pressing S and Z and Z again, or let me select this gizmo. So maybe I can select the gizmo directly, but you can see, well, it's not really aligned with the with the fingers. So I would, I think it would have been better if I'm taking this edge that is like totally aligned. So I'm, I'm going to remove this and adding a new one. It's going to be perfectly aligned with this. And now if I'm selecting everything from the finger, I can press G and Y and or S and Y. Sorry, now I'm scaling along the finger. So I hope you understood what this method is, this uh, technique was. The idea was to create a coordinate system based on the direction of the edge. So now that I have this, I can go a bit into sculpt mode. Maybe push the shape of the palm a bit more inside. Oh, sorry. Okay. Again, this, what I'm doing is not mandatory for the base mesh, but because the, the sculpting part will be taking care of this, but it's, uh, it's still okay if you want to work a bit the anatomy of the hand at this point. But I think that for this tutorial, not in order to make it uh, less longer than it is already, I'm going to call it down done for it. And I'm going to maybe widen a bit the top, the fingertips. Um, hmm. You remove the the coordinate system i'm going to widen the, the fingers a bit like this and i'm going to attach this hand that we've made to our character so maybe the thumb now that i'm seeing it uh, from far away is a bit small so i can create in this case i have no choice to create um, coordinate system so edge one in this case and now i can select the finger and I can scale it a bit along the direction of the thumb. I think it's much 
better like this, yes. And as I told you, I need to flip the end around because it's not uh, aligned anymore with the arm. So I'm going to press Ctrl M and X. Going back to the global transformation, Ctrl M and X. Oh, maybe it's Alt M. No, uh, it's Ctrl Control Alt M and X. Where, where is the mirror option? Control Shift M. Now it is on the 2.8 version. Sorry, and now I can press X. Whoa, Control M, Control Shift M. Select mirror. Y Z Y. No, it's not working anymore. So, whatever. What I can do is pressing S X minus one, and I have the end, and I can rotate it, and I will be. Um, uh, recalculating the normals by pressing Ctrl Shift N, as you can see. And now I need to uh, attach this end back to my model. But one thing before doing this is to remember that if you're putting the hand like this, it should be approximately the size of the face to the hairline. So it's approximately right like this. So I'm going to put the hand here. Hmm. To me, it seems a bit big, so I'm going to scale it and I'm going to scale the head a bit later. So I'm selecting the hand, joining the hand with the arm, scaling it a bit, and I'm going to select the wrist and uh, the hand, and I'm going to bridge in edge mode the loop like this. And now I can recalculate the normals for everything and I'm good to go. Okay, now it's uh, just, uh, I think the normals are inverted. So if you go there, you can display them and you can see that the normals are inverted. So I'm selecting everything, control N and recalculate the normal inside. I think it's going to be better like this. Of course, I need to unhide the normal, uh, hide the normal, sorry. And I'm going to push the hand a bit towards the back and rotate it a, a, a bit like this. And, um, and I think we are pretty good to shape the, to go to the, pretty good to go according to the, to, to the stage we are in for modeling the wrist and the arms. So I'm going to add this note that from the elbow that is approximately there. So if you are extending your arm, the elbow is slightly turned inside, slightly toward the inside. You can see here we have like very tight geometry. I don't want this, so I'm going to smooth this in sculpt mode. But the, as I told you, the, hel the elbow is a bit like this and it's connected directly to the end, to um, a ball joint at the end here of the wrist. So I'm, I'm placing it like this and it's straight. Okay, so I can add a new cut there. I can a bit uh, remove a bit of then of uh, geometry from the front there, not geometry, but I can flatten the geometry a bit from the front. And overall, I can shape the arm. Stop the arm, the shape of the arm. So inside it's like this. To me, it's, it looks a bit, a bit um, small. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale it with proportional editing. So I'm going to put the 3D cursor there by pressing Shift right click, and I'm going to press comma um, semicolon to go in the 3D cursor. I'm going to scale from the pivot point there a bit the arm and you should be able to rotate the arm to the mid thigh. So I think it's okay, right? This, like this. So I'm going to 
smooth the arm, the lower, the forearm, sorry, a bit. Maybe using the clay, I can add a bit of the, the forearm muscle, but it's not very visible because we don't have the topology, of course. I can also push the, using the proportional editing. Where's the proportional editing? It's there. <laughs> okay, I can um, go back to the, I can go back using semicolon to median points and I can like push the biceps a bit inside. I think we are close to be calling it done. Of course, we can spend even more time with a lot of things, but as a base mesh, I think it's pretty decent. So, of course, it's not perfect uh, in terms of topology and in terms of a lot of things, but I think we can uh, we can call it done for now because it's a long tutorial. I don't want to bother you a lot with uh, the, this thing. The only thing I will want to do is to push the origin back towards the foot, so I can press origin to uh, 3D cursor, which is in the center of the world, and I. I said that I wanted to work a bit on the head, so I'm going to I'm going to work a bit on the head then, therefore, and um, I think that the head is a bit high, or at least the face. and also the eyes. Um, they are a bit, uh, at least to me, they are a bit uh, looking high. So of course we can add more geometry there. So I will do it just for the purpose of like pushing the um, arcades a bit in the front, the ridge. And also it will help me to push the lower lead a bit. But the cool thing is that right now you have all the topology to define a much better human looking character. And it will be easy for you to sculpt on this. So if you remove this, for instance, uh, you will be able to see that the eyes are a bit, uh, a bit too big. So I'm going to scale them. I'm going to add another cut around this. I think it's going to be much better like this. I don't want to add the cut, in fact, but... And one thing that I want to do is to just change the shape of this eye to be a bit more realistic looking. An eye is not a perfect uh, um, ellipse ellipsoidal shape. So the nose is not that much defined, but we don't have to, because uh, we can sculpt this. But I think that like this, it's probably a good start 
for creating a mana to me study or a character or high race character um maybe the lower legs are a bit thin but it's okay it depends on the style of the character that you're doing but i think we can call it calling it down done for now As a modeler, you always want to push things further, but here I wanted to do a straight on tutorial and like a one shot tutorial and I didn't want it to record different parts. I wanted to show you like what it, what it takes to create something like this. So it's not perfect, but I think it's uh, still okay for um, I think we, we have been like working for two hours or something like this. Uh, so you see that adding a sub subdivision surface, we can see a bit better the shapes that we've defined. We, see, we can see also the different errors that I didn't want to, 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 to see in the, in the final mesh. So let me like correct some, some of the stuff. I can push a bit better the ribcage right, right there, uh, defining a bit better the, the different shapes here I can um, let's move a bit the back so maybe here you won't want to have the end of the butterfly there maybe you want to probably have this lower under, under the butt, so we are going to do this as a final touch. So I'm going to add a shape like this inside. Okay, and I'm going to connect, uh, to merge those points at last. Merge at last. Probably better to push this geometry as low as possible, and uh, maybe we can also slide a bit some edges like this to have a much better control on the size of the butt. Maybe we can smooth a bit the transition here, and I think. For real, <laughs> now I'm calling it down. So thank you for watching. I hope this was uh, informative enough for you. I hope you will be able to create your own base mesh uh, in Blender or in whatever software you like. And uh, thank you for watching and see you next time.